welcome back to our segment with WKU Owensboro. We'd like to thank them for underwriting this segment. With us today is David Powers, and David is the Student Services Coordinator at WKUO, and we'll be talking today about the many services that are offered locally to students. Hey, and welcome back to the show, David. Thank you. It's great to be here. You're no stranger to, to coming to see us sure. at 71 Magazine. Sure. And today, though, we're going to cover a multitude of topics that mm -hmm. affect uh, WKUO students or potential students. Sure. So the first thing is, you know, um, one of the things that happens in the spring mm -hmm is that uh, recruitment of students. Mm -hmm. And I hear that you all have a new position. Um, can you tell us yes. a little bit about that? Sure, sure. It's, uh, we're really excited about the position. We hope to have it filled this month. It's a recruiter slash advisor position. So they'll have, obviously, academic advising responsibilities along with uh, recruiting responsibilities. Uh, and this person will spend probably a day a week at each of our partner community college campuses. Obviously we have a strong relationship with OCTC. Mm -hmm. uh, there'd also be Henderson, Madisonville, and Hopkinsville. And I don't know if you, did you transfer, did you have the experience of transferring from one institution to another I, when I you were in college? I didn't receive my associates at OCTC. I just and actually just on. went on to, to Western. Well, yeah. as, as a transfer student and a former transfer advisor at OCTC, I can tell you, if you sit down with, on the phone with a student and try to make that call to a transfer advisor at one of the four-year colleges, uh -huh. it's, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult call to make. Because really, uh, four-year Four-year institutions, for the most part, aren't set up to do transfer advising until you're really already in the system. Oh. You're a student on the campus. Yeah. It's, tough, it's tough to get in touch with someone up front, on the front end of things. And to really successfully transfer and be sure all your credits count, you need to be speaking with a, a transfer advisor as early in the process as possible. Uh, so what this, this traveling recruiter and advisor is going to do is it's going to it's going to uh, serve students on those community campus on the front end so that they can get that transfer advising uh, up, front up front and streamline and streamline that that process which is really unique uh, uh, in absolutely. that model it's a great it's a great service for community college students well and too I know it sometimes um, you feel like you don't speak the language of the university sure and so you calling they may be telling you something and something can get lost in translation absolutely absolutely and really it, it's it, it's the folks in the departments on those large university campuses that do the advising a lot of times you'll speak with a transfer advisor who's more like an admissions representative mm -hmm. uh, who can tell you, answer general questions about the campus, but they can't get into the specifics of academic advising. Uh, even me, for instance, when I visit transfer fairs at, at some of the community colleges, I can talk to you about what it's like to be a student at WKUO or WKU main campus. But in terms of technical advising questions regarding individual majors, many of those, those uh, advisors aren't trained, aren't trained in, that, in so. that area. But this recruiter and advisor will be, and they'll offer that service on the community college campuses so they won't have to travel. And what a great, um, for those individuals that know that they're mm -hmm. going to begin at OCTC and transfer mm -hmm. or at uh, Madisonville mm -hmm. or any of the other sure. local community colleges, what a terrific, uh, that's a great uh, resource to offer. Sure, and you, and you hit on what the key, the key really is, is knowing, on, knowing early, early in the process that you intend to transfer. That's where a lot of students get in trouble. Um, it, it's a tough decision to make what, what you want to major in, what you want to be for the rest of your life. Right. Uh, so knowing up front and not, ch not changing your major, you know, you'll hear horror stories about transfer. And usually if you trace that back, it's from students who, who made a decision, maybe changed their mind. You know, your typical student will change their major two or three times. Right. And once you, you head down a road so far, sometimes it's tough to get those courses to to Transfer, find an, equi yeah. an equivalent course at, a, at another institution. Oh. So it's key, that, that career advising piece and knowing up front what you want to do, which is tough, it is it. really the key in, you know, in, in transferring smoothly. And ha but having that person, I, think, I just <laughs> think about what a great resource. Oh, and of course, you, it's hard not to think about that and not think about my own, your own educational sure. um, journey that, that we took. To have, sure. to have had that would have been phenomenal. Oh, great. Yeah, we're really excited. We can't wait to have them come on board. Well, on the same note there, you all are also, uh, you have a unique partnership mm -hmm. in recruiting with OCTC. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, OCTC has been a great partner in, in recruiting. And, and uh, we joke sometimes among the advisors that we, re we recruit, I recruit for OCTC just mm -hmm. as much as I do WKU. Sure. Because we are their second two years of their education, the three and 400 level classes at WKUO. Um, so it, it really makes sense when we make these visits to the high schools that we have an OCTC advisor to explain the front end of things. Yes. You know, a lot of times students will ask to come into our, our campus. 
uh, you know, and, and they'll, they'll be pretty impressed with the facilities and they'll be anxious to start and not realize that they're actually going to start across the street at, at OCTC, OCTC before they, yeah. before they come, come to us. So it just, it just gives the student a, a total picture of, of what their experience is going to be like as a joint admit student or a student transferring from, from OCTC to WKU or WKUO. And I've referenced this many times. I attended my freshman year on main campus mm -hmm. at WKU, and it was too overwhelming for me. It wasn't a, I wasn't ready for that atmosphere mm -hmm. um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Sure. Came back and went to um, OCC at the time mm -hmm. and had a wonderful experience, but to have had an opportunity to speak with a WKU and an OCTC rep exactly. up front, mm -hmm. That, that could be extremely beneficial for those students. You know, and, and as a joint admit student, you not only have access to advisors, but, but all student services, you know, career services, uh, academic services, all the way down to main campus services if you intend to attend uh, main campus. Right. So it, it really just gets you in, that, in the process a little, a little earlier. And I think that um, you all, people think perhaps, well, if I go to um, OCTC or WKU, I may not have all the opportunities that mm -hmm. I have on campus. That's a good point. And, and that is not true. You have here true. a program called the WKUO VIP program. VIP, yes. Can v you tell us a little sure. bit about that? It's, uh, it's Volunteering in Progress is what the VIP stands for, and it's a program we adopted uh, from main campus. Our marketing specialist, uh, Hannah Thurman, is, is heading up that effort. And the goal is to get students more involved in service-oriented projects. Uh, there'll be three service projects per semester. I believe this first semester, uh, they're going to be working with the Humane Society, and we're going to do Relay for Life, as we did last year. It was probably the most successful student event that we had uh, last year, and then Habitat uh, for Humanity will be the first three service projects. So, you know, we really think that's an important part of the, you know, the education process and maturity process to get involved with volunteering and, and with uh, the community. Absolutely. Sure. And I think about uh, people sometimes don't know where to begin mm -hmm. in uh, their volunteerism. Absolutely. And especially if they are a traditional student. Mm -hmm. When you're a little bit older, you've had more community experience and more experience in general. Sure. But for individuals who are looking for somewhere to plug in, and what a great resume builder Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. You know, yeah, that's exactly right. On the practical end, we, yeah. you know, we all we all have those blanks, those blank spots in our resume or on our our, uh, our uh, applications, speak for yourself. Our, no, our, our, <laughs> our applications. Uh, you know, and volunteering for me, and I will speak for myself. Was a, was always an area where I, I could have used some some development. Right. You know, on that job application or on that resume. So it does give you an opportunity to to do that. You know, early on, and and think about the networking opportunities. Sure. You know, just from a practical end of things. Well, and on on main campus, there are so many philanthropic sure. opportunities, and uh, a person may not see that immediately mm -hmm. um, at WKUO, but it's there. Absolutely, but it's there. Absolutely, and we're working to expand more and more of those opportunities all the time as our enrollment grows. You know, we expect to, to grow all of those types of programs, student well, services and programs. And speaking of enrollment, when you have enrollment, hopefully you have graduates. You will have people that will, uh, absolutely. will go and they'll finish out. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, last year's a commencement service, it was apparently such a success that now you all are going to have to even relook what you do in the spring. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that commencement you, you service? Can, you can tell by the uncontrollable grin on my face that it, it went very well. Commencement went, went very well last year. We had... I think in the neighborhood, 60 or 70 students choose to take part in a commencement ceremony wow. here locally, which has actually led to some of the other regional campuses choosing to have their, their own commencement uh, ceremonies, which is, which is flattering. But it was held at Deer Park Elementary last year mm -hmm. in, their, uh, in their gym, and uh, we had over 600, 600 to 10. The gym was just packed. packed it, was sure. it was standing room only. So this year we're going to be moving it to the River Park Center. We're very, very excited excited about that opportunity. And so. I'm sure those families will greatly yeah, appreciate sure the convenience and the comfort <laughs> exactly. of the River Park. And one of the, one of the really nice things about the local commencement is there's an opportunity to, to bring some of, of the extended family. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you're limited in the number of guests you can bring, obviously, right. practically you can keep it to a practical number. But, yes. you know, we were able to, to see extended families and wives and husbands and children and moms and dads and grandparents. And that, that, that's, that really makes for a, 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 neat, a neat ceremony, special special event. Well, and I say this not to knock large universities at all, <laughs> but if you've ever attended a large university <laughs> ceremony, 
sure. you will be there for hours, unless, especially if your person is further down the line. Sure. When you look at the number of graduates that WKUO is graduating, mm -hmm. it's a nice service. It it's is. A, Comfortable time. You're in a very comfortable spot at sure. the River Park. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a much, good experience. It is, and it's it's much more similar to a high school. It uh, really is like, like a high school graduation, which is kind of kind of neat. But again, we encourage students. We we have tried to schedule it so that they can also attend main campus ceremonies. We encourage them, obviously, to to take part in the main campus ceremony as well. Uh, but we we want to recognize those students here locally also. I think that I think it's terrific, and it also again just adds to the. What, what WKUO can offer yeah, locally sure. to pe for people to have a, uh, uh, a recognition mm -hmm. is, is just phenomenal. And it, re it really helps build your, your alumni base too. You know, you're going to have a, a cohort or a group of students who feel a part of the Owensboro campus and the Owensboro community. Right. Which is a little, which is a little different. It know? is. It is, especially in the past from sure. where, the, where it's been in the past. You all have become so student oriented. Mm -hmm. Um, and community oriented and you know even uh, there are things that you all offer I know from living on main campus there was a lot um, there was a lot offered you all have several student events coming mm -hmm. up um, in the spring and, and on into mm -hmm. September can you tell us a little bit about those sure we're uh, we're really happy to to be sponsoring this is going to be our second we're gonna have a career fair I believe the month is April uh, coming in April um, it's going to be target our local local uh, departments programs uh, careers, you know, that, that students might be able to find here close to home because that's why they're, they're at WKUO is they want to stay in this area, they want to work in this area. So we're going to target those jobs, try to have those kinds of employers represented uh, at the career fair. Um, we also, I'm trying to think through some of the, some of the other things Friday that we did have going. Five. Friday after you five, really of course. Down we we, we uh, really enjoy Friday after five. That, that will be coming in the summer. I think we're uh, going to be doing that again in June. We're going to try to get our alumni uh, a little more involved in Friday after five as well. I think in September, we're we're planning our first uh, wellness fair. We're really excited about getting some community uh, partners involved in that. Our nursing program uh, under Dr. Kelly Morris's leadership yes. has really taken off, uh, and we we really wanted to work with those students to, to try to build to build that uh, that fair. And what's great is when you do, especially a student health fair, those <laughs> individuals that are pursuing um, a degree in the medical field locally can see what is out there. Absolutely. Um, I do a lot in my full-time job talking to students and they do not, they may just think of one entity, a hospital or a Absolutely. nursing home. A and point. there's there's a lot of uh, things out there. So I think this health fair will really broaden the mm -hmm. horizons of what's available in Owensboro. It, it, and, it, and it helps us pull together some of our student services that we want to offer, things like flu shots and TB Absolutely. tests. And we can do all of that uh, in one place. At, at one time, you know, work with some of our partners to get discounts for our students at mm -hmm. some of the health clubs and those kinds of things. So we want to roll all of that into one kind of a wellness fair. And although it gets a lot of attention, I still think that health, fitness, and wellness is is uh, is put on the back burner. It is a lot of, a is. lot of times. In this way too, it's. Now, see, when you're on main campus, you have a built-in workout facility the walking hill. the hill. That's right. That's yes, right. regardless of the, yeah. the health care facility True. down there, but you, you have that. And so locally, we do have to put more emphasis Absolutely. on it. So I think it's great you're bringing to them uh, what uh, you're showing that they're important and that their, their health is important. Mm -hmm. Um, especially as they're going in the workforce. The healthier person is, the less uh, days lost out on Absolutely. the work site. So, yeah. um, and finally, we want to talk about the bookstore. I think there are people who, um, they don't realize what a great benefit it ha you, you all mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. in having your very own WKUO bookstore specifically for your students right there on campus. Sure. You know, I, I'm still stunned as I go through the community to, to learn that folks don't know that we that we exist out, out there with our bookstore. Uh, it's a great service to students, you know, in terms of commencement exercises, ordering their cap and gown, you can pick that up here locally, uh, ordering their textbooks, e either online through the bookstore, mm -hmm. or they can pick those up and have those shipped locally as well. You offer a, a wide range of, of WKU Hilltopper apparel. You know, if you want to pick up that hoodie or get that plate for your the front of your car for alumni to come in and pick up those items, I'm happy also to see that you're starting to see more Hilltopper apparel even in in, in your, your in your WalMarts and uh, other yeah, stores. I've noticed that. And, as well. That's nice to see, but there's just a wide selection there at the bookstore, even drinks and snacks for for the students. Students are available there, so come on. You know, we encourage folks to come on out, and uh, if they've not been out there, to, to check it out. Absolutely. Really proud of it. Well, you know, we have covered so much in such a short period of time, and if people want more information. 
David, can they just can they go to the website? They, they, they can go to the website uh, www.wku.edu backslash Owensboro, okay. uh, or just call six eight four nine seven nine seven for the the office number. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us Thanks today. Thanks a lot. Again, we'd like to thank WKUO for underwriting our segment. Stay tuned for more great community programming.